Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next disease we will talk about is malaria. So the pathogen which causes malaria is a protozoa, plasmodium. Now there are many different species of plasmodium which cause malaria like plasmodium vivax, fancy param and plasmodium malaria. So basically plasmodium is the causal pathogen for uh, malaria. So how do these organisms enter inside our body? Now, these organisms do not enter through a contaminated food or water. Rather, they enter through bite of the female Anopheles mos mosquito. So that is why we often use mosquito repellents or mosquito nets to protect ourselves against mosquito. Because some of the mosquitoes can be really dangerous. And particularly this female Anopheles mosquito, their bite can actually inject the protozoa that is it can inject plasmodium inside our body and this can cause malaria and what do we see here so here we actually have a special transmitting agent so this mosquito acts as the transmitting agent so here you can see this lady is sitting here and reading book now it is possible that this mosquito is a female anopheles mosquito and while it bites the lady it will also inject the plasmodium inside its body so female anopheles mosquito acts as the transmitting agent or it is often known as the vector so we talked about vector right so if an organism helps in spreading the disease from one person to another person that is called vector so in this case in case of malaria female anopheles mosquito is the vector so you can see here so here you can see that this mosquito can actually help in transmitting the disease from an infected person to a normal person. So this is how it can transmit it. And that is why it is the vector for malaria. So what happens in this disease when the, once the pathogen enters inside the body, the pathogen here is plasmodium. So once plasmodium enters the body, it will affect the red blood cells. So the red blood cells get ruptured. So it breaks down the red blood cells and that is how gradually malaria spreads throughout the body. Now, before we talk about the symptoms and treatment of malaria, let us look at the life cycle of the malarial parasite. And which is the malarial parasite? It is plasmodium. Now, this is little interesting, the life cycle of plasmodium. So, if you see here, the life cycle of a plasmodium, it involves two hosts. There is not a single host. So, one host is human being and the other host is mosquito. So, this malarial parasite has two hosts and what are the two hosts one is human and the other one is a mosquito now we will see how humans and mosquito act as host for plasmodium so this is how the life cycle of plasmodium continues so here if you see let us suppose mus the, a mosquito bites an infected person. So a person who is already infected with malaria. So this plasmodium in, I mean, bites an infected person. Now when it bites an infected person, what happens? It takes up, it bites, so it sucks in blood and that is how it gets its food. So the, uh, so the Mosquito is actually getting its food in the form of blood, but at the same time, it is also taking up the gametocytes along with the blood. And what are these gametocytes? These gametocytes are the gametocytes of plasmodium. So these gametocytes will also enter inside the body of the mosquito. Now, what will happen inside the body of the mosquito? These gametocytes will form gametes. Gametes, we all know what are gametes. They are the sex cells, that is the male and the female sex cells. These gametocytes will produce the gametes, that is the sex cells. And then these gametes will undergo fusion. And then they will form this oocyanate, which will form the oocyst. So, and this entire process of fertilization and development will take place inside the body of the mosquito. So, you can see that that means the uh, protozoa, that is the plasmodium, is actually living inside the body of the mosquito. So, you can say that mosquito is a host and uh, the parasite is of course a parasite. Now, once the oocyst is formed, what happens? Spores are released from this. 
Now what happens to these sporozoids which are released? Now what happens is this mosquito, the same mosquito goes back and bites another person who is maybe a normal person who is not suffering from malaria. Now when he bites that person, these spores which are being produced inside the body of the mosquito, the spores are stored in the salivary gland of the mosquito. Now, whenever the mosquito bites a normal person, what will happen? These spores will be released and as a result, the sporozoids will enter inside the body of the human being, right? What will happen to the sporozyte once it enters the human body? Now, as soon as it enters the human body, it directly reaches the human liver. So, first of all, it affects the liver. So, the sporozoids reach here. Now, these sporozoids will undergo asexual reproduction. So, they will multiply in number. Now, when their number becomes too huge, the liver cells will start to burst. Now, when the liver cells burst, what will happen? The content will be released in the blood. Now, inside the liver, the liver is not one single cell. Liver is made up of many cells. Now, let us suppose inside one cell of the liver, you have these sporozoids. Now, these sporozoids undergo asexual reproduction. So, they keep on increasing in number. They multiply themselves. Now, then it becomes so much that that particular liver cell will burst. Now, when it bursts, what happens? The spores inside it, they get distributed or they get released in the bloodstream. Now, as soon as they get released in the blood, now asexual reproduction will continue to take place in the red blood cell. So, if you see here, this is how the asexual reproduction is taking place where these are each red blood cell. So, see inside each red blood cell, the asexual reproduction will happen and again the same thing will happen. That is inside each cell, the number of uh, uh, this uh, sporozoids will increase so much that the red blood, red blood cells will burst. Now, when the red blood cell bursts, there is an, a particular substance or a toxic substance which is released and that toxic substance is known as hemozoin. So, hemozoin, I write it here, hemo, hemo means blood. So, hemozoin is a toxic substance which is released when RBCs burst. So, basically this substance is present inside the red blood cells. Now, what do these substances do? This substance is that particular chemical which is responsible for causing fever and chills. That is fever with shivering. And you would have seen that in a patient who is suffering from malaria, fever is always accompanied by uh, heavy chills. Right? So, due to this hemozoin, in all the symptoms which are generally seen in malaria, they are because of this hemozoin. So, what do you see? So, if you see the sporozoids and the uh, development of the sporozoids, this entire process takes place inside the body of a human being. So, that means the parasite is living inside the body of the human being. So, human being is also a host for the parasite. So, we can say that the parasite spends half of its lifetime inside the mosquito and the remaining half of the lifetime inside human being. Now, what happens to these sporocytes? They will then form gametocytes and this formation of gametocytes take place inside the body of human beings. Now again when a mosquito comes and bites that human being, so now this human being is infected because he, he already has the hemozoin inside his body. So he is a person who is infected with malaria. Now when a mosquito will come and bite this human being, the cycle will repeat because the gametocytes are present here. So the mos mosquito will pick up the gametocytes and again this entire cycle will keep on repeating. So this is how uh, the uh, malaria disease is transmitted from one person to another person through female anopheles mosquito. Now, any just it is not that just any mosquito can help in this transmission. It is done only by this specific mosquito. So, let us quickly review the steps once again. So, as I discussed, mosquito will bite an infected person. Now, when it bites an infected person, it will take the gametocytes. Now, once it takes the gametocytes, the development of the gametocyte takes place inside the mosquito. That means the formation of gamete, gametes from gametocytes, the fusion of the gametes, then formation of the oocyst 
and then release of the spores. All these things take place inside the body of the mosquito. Then sporozoites are formed and they are stored in the salivary glands of mosquito. Now this mosquito when it bites a normal person then what happens? The sporozoites which were stored in the salivary glands they are injected inside the body of that human being. Now again the development of the sporozoite takes place inside the human body primarily in the liver cells. Now when the liver cells burst due to repeated asexual reproduction then the contents are released into the RBCs and then again the RBCs also rupture. When RBCs rupture, hemozoin is released and this hemozoin is responsible for all the symptoms which are seen in a patient with malaria. So what will happen as a result gametes? Now these further process of the sporozoids will take place and the gametocytes will be formed. Now these gametocytes will in turn be picked up by the mosquito when it bites the infected person. So this is how the entire cycle of uh, the plasmodium parasite will continue. So as I said plasmodium parasite has two hosts that is human beings and mosquito. So if you see what happens inside the body of human beings, inside the body of human beings formation of gametocytes take place. So in human beings, sporozoids enter and then sporozoids later form the gametocytes. And what happens inside the body of mosquito? Formation of spermatosporozoids take place inside the body of mosquito. So here you see inside the mosquito gametocytes enter and from there sporozoids are formed. So this is the entire life cycle. Now let us quickly look at the symptoms and treatment of malaria. As far as symptoms are considered, high fever, chills, headache, body ache, nausea and vomiting. And as I have mentioned before also, there's all these symptoms arise due to the release of the toxic chemical substance called hemozoin due to when the RBCs rupture. Now, how do we treat malaria? Again, it can be, first of all, it has to be diagnosed because see, you would have seen by now that even in case of typhoid also, you have fever. So, how do you get to know whether it is malaria or typhoid? So, that is why we have the diagnostic tests. What happens here is the blood tests and the liver function test because in this case, liver is an organ which gets impacted the most. So it, all these tests will tell if it is malaria and if it is then it is treated with anti-malarial drugs. There are a couple of drugs which are anti-malarial so these drugs will actually help in curing the disease. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.